Hi, I'm Daniel Helminiak, and I'm concerned about religion these days. Well, I've been concerned about religion all my life. I was ordained a Catholic priest in Rome. I have a doctorate in theology and have taught seminary students. I also have a doctorate in psychology, and with it I try to understand the spiritual dimension of our lives. My sense is that when you put theology and psychology together, you get spirituality. It's the link between them. Many people these days say that they are spiritual but not religious. This divide is a sign of the times. Religion is not working anymore. Many people, even regular churchgoers, have secret doubts and nagging uncertainties about their religion. Spiritual restlessness is a symptom of our age. Check the web. You'll find graph after graph with lines going down, 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 year after year, indicating a decrease in participation in religion and support for religion. This trend is especially strong among young people. They tend to see through surface claims, the hypocrisies and the inconsistencies in much of religion, and the youth don't want anything to do with it. I understand that. Having dedicated my life to religion, I become more and more wary of religion as the years go by and as our world struggles to be one family. In the past, religions used to hold us together. In different places, at different times, groups of people tended to believe alike. So they lived together in harmony. Religion made for community. But now... Now it seems that religions divide people. The times are hard. People are scared. So they hunker down and circle the wagons and wage a battle against anyone who doesn't believe as they do. We see this reaction all over the place. Just listen to the day's news. There's ISIS in the Middle East and Boko Haram in Nigeria, but even in the United States. Synagogues are defaced, Muslims are targeted, abortion clinics get bombed, transgender people are murdered, gay marriage is a powder keg. In the South, where I live, billboards and radio stations and street corner preachers condemn anyone who thinks differently. We even have Christian car dealerships here as well as Christian schools, Christian music, Christian clothing styles, Christian lawyers, Christian politics, Christian towns. The word Christian has become a name for segregation. It sets one group of people off from others. It pits one set of otherworldly beliefs against others. What used to be a solution for human community has now become the problem, religion. What used to hold people together is now setting them apart. Young people see these things and lose faith in religion. How could it be of God when it ends up in division, hatred, and harm? Even older people begin to doubt the beliefs that used to guide their lives. How do you know what to believe these days? How could any religion be right when they all claim to be right? Maybe none of them is right. So I'm deeply concerned about religion these days. Now don't get me wrong. I don't say get rid of religion. That, I think, is a mistake. The challenge is to retrieve the original inspiration and to square the old ideas with the new understandings. In the end, we all need religion of some kind. I mean, we need other people to share with us the struggle to make good sense of life and to live it well. We cannot make life's pilgrimage alone. Even people who claim to be spiritual but not religious end up sharing books with one another, uh, meeting over coffee to discuss spirituality, opening chat rooms on the internet, forming groups of like-minded people, and we have organized religion emerging again. Not to get rid of religion, but to make it serve genuine spirituality, as religion is supposed to do. This is today's challenge. 
I've grappled with this challenge from many perspectives, and this is why I'm making this video, to let you know of my work and to hope it could be of help to you. Right now I'm speaking specifically about my latest popular book, The Transcended Christian. The subtitle, What Do You Do When You Outgrow Your Religion? The subtitle tells it all. I talk about a transcended Christian. The word means to go beyond, to move outside of, to expand into new places. The idea is this, if you dig deeply into the Christian tradition, it will lead you beyond the limits of most of today's Christianity and into a flow with all genuine spiritual people, regardless of their religious beliefs or lack thereof. Without giving up your Christianity, you can open your embrace to every human being in our pluralistic world. After all, isn't the Christian message supposed to be relevant to everyone? Isn't everyone my neighbor? We have to find that relevance, engage that connection, and live our faith in a way that fits the 21st century. The message is sometimes hard. Not everyone can hear it. I am speaking to people who are honest enough to admit that they have serious questions about life, who wonder what they should believe, who struggle with the right way to live. I'm speaking to the spiritual searchers out there, the truth seekers. You are the hope of our world, the leaven of society, the light set on a mountaintop. I'm pointing out a path and offering guidance. As for those who already think they have all the answers, well, so much the better for them. As long as those answers are not causing problems for the rest of us, as long as their religion is not secretly self-righteous, demeaning, divisive, or dishonest, part of the problem of our age. I'm talking about my book, The Transcended Christian. It's available at Amazon.com in paperback and ebook, and you can visit me online at visionsofdaniel.net. Here are some of the ideas I discussed. What does spiritual mean anyway? Can people be spiritual if they don't believe in God? Better not say no to the Buddhists. Then what does spiritual mean? How do you know what's right or wrong? It just cannot be that whatever you think is right is automatically then right. After all, the bombers of the Twin Towers were acting in the name of God. There is a difference between right and wrong. How do you tell? The same goes for true and false. Just believing something deeply does not make it true. You can say it's true for me, but that does not mean you're necessarily right. So how do you know what is true or false? And can you be comfortable living with some uncertainty? Most of us want certainty. But in fact, our lives are a mystery. I say that in my senior years more and more appreciative of it and more and more grateful for the mystery. We live in unknowing. To accept this fact is what faith means, to trust without having all the answers, to recognize that there's something bigger than us in the whole mix. Then how about abortion? The divinity of Christ? the three persons in one God, the changing roles of men and women. Where does science fit in? And the churches, the churches, there are so many of them these days. Christianity cannot be witness to world peace when Christian communities cannot even live in peace with one another. Yet the issue is bigger. It's not just Christianity that is at stake, it's the world. Today's Christianity must find ways to connect with all the religions and all people of goodwill. Otherwise, we're not talking Christian. So Jesus prayed, Father, may they be one, all, as I am in you and you in me. May they be one in us. 
that's the vision I offer in the Transcended Christian. I genuinely believe that there is a way to transcend our religious traditions without just abandoning them. I got to where I am by delving deeply into my own religious upbringing. Of course, I have had the benefit of a long and expensive education and decades of personal searching. I recognize these blessings and am humbly grateful for them. In return, I offer to you what I have learned, and I hope it will make for a better world for all of us. Thank you for watching and listening.